Good morning. My name is Laura and welcome to the Daily Reflection from Christchurch Chorley Wood. Well, I was in my garden over the weekend doing some much needed tidying up and I noticed that I also needed to attend to some pruning. Um, we've got a beautiful climbing rose just outside our back door that over the past couple of years has been absolutely prolific with its blooms. Very full, gorgeous, fragrant yellow flowers um, during the early summer and I absolutely love it. However, this last year it didn't seem to do quite so well and it started looking really spindly in places and, and some of the flowers were on one side and there wasn't some on another and yeah, so it, it wasn't looking quite so lovely. And it also started to develop a few little sort of like, I don't know, rusty, rusty looking spots on the leaves. So even I know as a bit of an amateur gardener that that's not a good thing. So I knew that come winter, um, I'd have to get to it and it would need a good prune. So last Sunday, despite the weather, um, and not forgetting that I'm a novice gardener, um, I approached the rose with the secateurs in hand and then stood <laughs> for what seemed like absolutely ages, contemplating what I should be doing and worrying about which bits to chop or to, to leave on and could I go in really hard or did I need to sort of just be gentle and sort of titillate around the edges. Um, so I thought, I know, Google, let's have a look at my gardening guru, Monty Don. But with all due respect to Monty, I wasn't actually convinced that my efforts were going to yield any sort of display that I wanted to see during the summer this year. So, but in my confusion, there was a very small little voice that kept saying to me, ah, yes, but you've got to prune this rose if you want to keep it healthy. Cut off the dead stems, listen to what Monty's saying about lateral, little, excuse me, lateral branches producing buds and whatnot. And then I thought, well, hang on a minute. This is just the same as the instruction that, that Jesus gives us in John chapter 15, when he talks about himself as the vine and his heavenly father as the gardener. So I thought, I'm going to check what the Bible's got to say on this. So it says in John chapter 15, verses one to five, I am the true vine and my father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit, while every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes so that it will be even more fruitful. So I thought, brilliant, that's great. I must be doing the right thing in order just to keep my plant healthy and vibrant, producing beautiful flowers. However, the, the parallel to our lives, I think here is, is overwhelming. You know, we're like the plants in our Lord's garden to which he lovingly tends in order to bring out the best in us. But sometimes that pruning, that you know, cutting us back needs to happen in order to bring forth better fruit. You know, and the fruit that we're obviously referring to here are fruits of the spirit. So fruits like compassion and tenderness and kindness and understanding, patience and, and the list goes on, as you know. So being pruned, though, I think can sometimes be quite a painful experience, can't it? And you know, we may need to walk through all sorts of difficulties, grief, hardships and so on to learn things about our own characters. And so similarly, the, the, the cut of the, the gardener's secateurs during winter might look really harsh and feel really harsh. But and it's a bit like the, I suppose, the restrictions that we're facing at the moment. They're a bit harsh, really, aren't they? But we know that it's all for our own good and if we want to remain healthy in a few months to come then we've got to sort of stick with all these 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 rules and regulations a bit like cutting back keeping contained um so you know i i do give thanks actually that during this period of character pruning if you want to call it that we've got something really special. We've got the promise of the Holy Spirit in us to guide us and to help us. And all we've got to do is keep facing Jesus in everything. And that particularly in the moment, obviously with, the, with so many challenges that we're all facing, you know, things that we now know we can't do and we can't see our families and we can't just sort of pop to the shops without wearing masks and getting home and washing our hands and, and all sorts. You know, there, there are so many things that have caused such a different situation now and, and we all know why, you know, but we've got this amazing encouragement and it actually comes in the next few verses of this chapter and it says, you are already clean because of the word I have spoken to you. Remain in me as I also remain in you. 
No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. So that, as I say, I find that really encouraging because it's saying that, you know, Jesus says if we remain constant in him, trusting him with our worries, our challenges and leaning in on him in times of trouble, he will help us to bear the fruit in our characters that will carry us through our lives, despite what's going on around us. You know, he is the vine. We are the branches and we will only bear fruit and grow stronger in adversity now if we keep our eyes on him and trust the promises of his word that we are his chosen people. We are his plants. We are his fruit. You know, his children. We are his children. And he wants to see us grow and blossom in our faith. So, Heavenly Father, I think we just give you thanks, don't we, for your word, for your reassurance that you are always with us and that you have grafted us into you, the vine. So, Lord, I just pray, Lord, that you can help us today and every day to know that the pruning experience that we go through in our day to day lives, particularly at the moment, we have you by our side and that this will cause us all this all this um trial that we're walking through with you with us will only help to strengthen us and to bring sort of richer fruit through in our characters but it's for your glory lord and we just give you huge thanks and lord i just commit our church family our own families our friends and our neighbors and just pray lord that you will fill us all with that wonderful promise Lord that you are always with us in everything that we do and everything that we are. Amen. So as I've said this I found this really encouraging and I went ahead and I pruned my rose and um, and I know that it will bring forward flowers in the summer as we too will bring forward fruit as we walk together with Jesus. So I've chosen a song today. Um, it's from my favourite Hill song. <laughs> um, it, well, they all they all are, it would seem. Um, but it's called um, New Wine. Um, the link will be attached. But I love the the first few lyrics in the crushing and the pressing. You are making new wine. So that's very sort of symbolic of the vine and the way in which we are pruned and used and. He brings us forward. We are like that new wine. So I pray that you will have a wonderful day, that the rest of your week is blessed. And I look forward to seeing you very soon. Take care and God bless.